Every man good evening. Uh, welcome to the first session of um, India Fitness Startup Hub. I'm Arzu Jain, uh, International Ecosystems and Community Manager at Head Start. And um, I welcome you all to the first session and we are pleased to bring these uh, sessions back for the community of India Fitness Startup Hub. Uh, the Hub is a joint collaboration between Startup India and Business Finland, powered by Head Start Network Foundation. And it's focused on enabling deeper collaboration between the startup ecosystems of India and Finland. Uh, just last week, we had the Honorable Ministers of India and Finland meet and discuss the wonderful progress made in uh, bridging the India and Finland startup ecosystems through this hub. Um, I'll just quickly take uh, a minute or two to uh, welcome my colleagues, uh, uh, Santeri and uh, Hannah. If you guys can come and say a quick hi to everyone. Uh, yes, Hannah is here. Hi, Hannah. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. And greetings from Helsinki. My name is Hanna Riski. I here, work here at Business Finland for the Work in Finland unit. And my main task include attracting foreign startups to Finland. And I'm really happy to have you all here listening to the, our webinar today. Uh, it's a continuation of the collaboration we already started last year with the Indian Head Start Network Foundation. And we are also going to continue this collaboration this year. And one of our targets is to make the Finnish startup eco ecosystem known. Known in India, what is happening, what, are, what kind of services are we providing and how are you able to get more information about them. So really, really happy to see you all here and we are looking forward for a really interesting webinar with good presentations today. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, uh, as you'll be joining us later again, uh, discussing about the startup permit and uh, uh, scaling up in Finland. Uh, I'll see you again. Yes. Thank you. Hi, Sandri. Uh, uh, yeah, hi, and hello. Hello, everyone. So, Sandri from Business Finland. Great to have you here. This webinar is uh, about funding and uh, uh, business acceleration opportunities. I think we have amazing content again, so I hope you find this session. We have had many of these sessions in the past. Uh, uh, this is all about networking and matchmaking, so uh, you can write your questions there in the chat. I think there will be also time for some Q&A, but also what we have seen, it's great to take these discussions forward after this webinar. You can connect with the speakers on LinkedIn or shoot questions via email and therefore keep the communication alive. And that is the whole purpose of this startup hub. So I hope you have a great session today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as uh, as Santiri mentioned, uh, we have you know dived deep into different sectors over the last year through our sessions, and today we are looking to give you all an overview of the funding landscape across both countries, with uh, funding being one of the you know key aspects of every startup's journey. And uh, to address the same subject, we have a great lineup of speakers uh, who will be giving us important insights. The sessions are really brief and crisp. Um, but if you are open to questions, please uh, drop them in the chat and uh, our speakers will take it up post the session and uh, if, uh, some of them will also be answered in the chat uh, section. So feel free to say a hi to everyone in, in the chat box, introduce yourself, um, you know, you never know who you might end up meeting. Uh, so yes, uh, so today, um, I mean, without further ado, let me proceed and uh, welcome our first guest of the evening. Uh, Sebastian Judy. Uh, let me quickly add him. Yes, Hi, so, uh, uh, Sebastian heads the partnerships team at Slush. Uh, he works with partners globally to collaborate and strengthen the startup ecosystem, combining industry experience with innovation. So today he'll be taking us through um, the you know what it is like to be to be building the biggest startup event in Finland and uh, building a platform to connect founders and investors. Uh, we together will be exploring reasons why international PC is pouring into Finnish startup ecosystem. So uh, welcome, Sebastian, and over to you for your session. Thank you. Yeah, so I can get started. So hi, everyone here. So Sebastian, you, you can also call me Sebu. So I joined now at the beginning of the year as head of partnerships here at Slush. So in my responsibility is to kind of uh, work with some of maybe mostly with the corporate partners who attend Slush to kind of um, collaborate and meet with startups. So they are either looking for investments, maybe acquisitions, uh, or they run some sort of incubator or, or want to have startups as their client or, or buy something from startups. So kind of creating that ecosystem where kind of like the established industry companies 
can also collaborate with startups and kind of like close the circle on that on that kind of innovation where everyone can create win-win relationships. So I, I think for today's presentation, I can go over what exactly is, is slush and kind of what it is its role perhaps in the Finnish ecosystem and, and more largely in the European ecosystem. And kind of we can first go through the background of how it kind of started and what the principle behind it is uh, to kind of like give a, give everyone a kind of comprehensive background what what slush is about. So so how back in in 2000 so uh slush first started in 2008 so we will actually go even a little bit more back in time but back in 2000 nokia uh, then known as a phone company now mostly working in uh, kind of like phone mobile phone networks uh was a huge company accounted for four percent of uh, finnish gross domestic product over 20 percent of total exports and the helsinki uh, stock uh, exchange was, was mostly filled by kind of like nokia's market cap so so to kind of give the um kind of background of how how things were in in finland and kind of like also university students and business students kind of viewed the road from like graduation to what they wanted their career to be was very much go work for Nokia, McKinsey, Kone, these big, like, uh, you know, globally known brands, but also like very large corporates that, you know, work in very established industries. So kind of in the background was that actually entrepreneurship was not seen as kind of like an attractive option, but that, that was kind of like, if you would not get into like these big brands or like McKinsey or Nokia, then, then you would go the kind of entrepreneurial route. And it was even even harshly sometimes maybe considered kind of like a failure but then back in 2008 approximately uh the iphone happened and kind of like nokia's unfortunate <laughs> maybe uh kind of like regression in in that business side started and then kind of like slush was uh kind of like this proposition of with no if nokia is no longer kind of like the flagship leading finland then what needs to happen in its place and then the idea was that we need new startups we need to kind of like create this like silicon valley of europe uh, and with those new companies kind of create that growth that they wouldn't be just like one company taking it forward, but it it would be this new innovation and there would be several new Nokias that would take its place. And, and how that would happen would be like startups, so people would be willing to like build new companies. And that's kind of how Slush started. So I think this is, was one of, from one of the first iterations and we can actually go through kind of like um, how, to, how to kind of build the ecosystem, what, what the three problems were. So like previously mentioned like attitude and culture was net, not there for like the entrepreneurship and then maybe there was not knowledge uh, skill passion there there was not like information shared between like previous entrepreneurs to kind of like the new students there was no place to kind of get this peer learning of what what to do when you want to build a company and also there was a lack of international venture capital at that moment to kind of like help actually create these new startups that you know have ambitions plans plans to scale we don't have like the money or cap money or capital at the moment to do that so the the goal was to kind of address these three problems and, and that is kind of like what was slush mission to kind of provide uh the attitude and and kind of atmosphere also to kind of like found companies and the knowledge and but also the capital the money is kind of like an important part of that so um then we can go Back then, it was like 2013, it was a cable factory, a smaller venue here in Helsinki. Uh, but then it kind of grew over the years and we took over Messukesk, which was the biggest uh, kind of like exhibit center in Finland. And then for years, it, it grew to like 2015 was around 14 or 15,000 people maybe. And then it kind of um, in 2019, uh, the, like before the pandemic, the event was 25,000. But uh, this was actually an important point. At that point, it was like starting to be that Slush was getting bigger and bigger and turning into a general tech conference. So what actually the pandemic, uh, we were we held a, like a smaller event in 2021, but there was also kind of like this recrystallization of being very founder focused and not just technology, not not just showcasing new robots or, or new cars, Teslas or anything, but what is it actually that founders want and get value out of? You know, if, if they see a cool electric car, it's like great and you see innovation, but it doesn't help them to build new companies. And, and back in 2021, we kind of like this refocus and it was 12,000 uh, people event. So a bit smaller, but we are kind of like sticking with that and to be kind of like, um, you know, have the core value that everything we do would be for the value for the founders. So speaking stages uh, have like um, agendas from previous company founders who talk about when they came close to failing and how they pivoted out of that or what, what to take into account when you are building a company. Uh, and kind of these, these are some of the statistics. 
I hope I'm not running out of time, time on my 10 minute slot, but we can like, you know, quickly go through this history. So what, and, and then, you know, some of the funding rounds that have happened at Slush. So kind of the core of Slush is to bring in startup founders and investors into the same space for two days to have meetings to attend, uh, talk about where, where different industries are headed, uh, you know, get, get in touch with interesting companies and kind of like the concrete example of what has occurred from that is that companies like Ivan uh, or Carbo Culture have gotten like seed funding or funding rounds out, out of the event. So get get that capital and get like venture capital funds that will help them to grow and uh, and kind of scale their business. And some of the past speaker, speakers at Slush have been, uh, you know, from venture capital companies or, or then Daniel Ek, who was the co-founder of Spotify or John Collison, the co-founder of Stripe, talking about what, how they lead their companies and, you know, scale them and, and build them this kind of advice that would help future founders. We, we want to like, you know, have these kind of speakers that can influence people now who will be building the next Spotify's and Stripes within, within the next 10 years. And kind of what what the effect of like slush uh, as a mission was that actually it, it built a uh, positive culture of entrepreneurship here in Finland that back in 2000 maybe one percent of people would like to start their own company but back in 2017 it was over 40 percent so we were able to kind of like create this this atmosphere of like a uh, company building within within the ecosystem and um it has kind of profiled the Nordics as one of the major tech hubs. So we, as Slush, we want to be kind of like leading startup event, at least in Europe, to kind of be the flag bearer of creating venture capital, venture capital opportunities and startups here, here. So kind of be the Silicon Valley of Europe. And what, what the effect of it all over the years, you can see from like the numbers is that actually foreign venture capital, especially within the last 10 years has you know, increased in Finland by quite a lot. And, and this is kind of like the core core, uh, you know, missions and achievements of Slush is that for, you know, building this kind of like event that brings all these people together for two days is able to create concrete results and, you know, bring the ecosystem forward, create more awareness for startups and, and bring startups to a space where they will be able to meet venture, venture capitalists and, you know, achieve that funding. So that that and some of some of the companies that have been birthed out of this is uh, Walt, uh, you know, by former uh, Slash CEO Mickey Kuzi, and then for example, Supermetrics and Aura have previously participated in Slash, so being one of the startups, uh, you know, having their presence and pitching to investors, letting them know what their product is, taking part in the pitching competitions, and you know, besides those two days, you know, you won't see be able to see the results, but the, within like in the next few years, this. Uh, companies have become like, for example, unicorns. And that's what we hope for every year of Slush that, you know, the companies you don't know yet within five years will be unicorns, will be there on the Slush, you know, walkways in the meeting area at the tables, having these kinds of discussions and, you know, just basically providing that space where that, that can happen. We can make those connections that turn into funding rounds, turning into meeting the people that you maybe you find a company with or create, create a partnership with another startup that will take you to the next level and be able to build a successful company. I think, I think that's um, probably pretty much my time over. So thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Sebastian. Uh, this was uh, definitely insightful. And, uh, you know, Slush is uh, one such event which is in the bucket list of every founder. And uh, uh, it would be great. I mean, I think uh, the uh, registrations of this uh, year has been opened up and uh, would love to, uh, you know, if you could share a line or two on how we can register uh, so that our attendees here can check that out too. Yeah, so we uh, on our website you can find you can pre-register for like our hatching bird ticket ticket shop. So that will open. But I'm happy to like uh, share that also we are planning to partner with the Embassy of India in Finland and Estonia to kind of uh, create a space for them within this last venue where they will be able to showcase Indian startups. So uh, I I work work with the embassy, but uh, but you can be in touch with them to kind of figure out what what is the solution from their side to source the startups who who will be able to attend to, through those channels. But I I'm very happy to like share that the, you know we have this kind of collaboration in place to bring the leading startups from india to also be present at slush and and get that value that you know talk to people who have founded companies and have built a successful unicorn uh, meet with investors and get that value that we want to achieve with establishing slush every year thanks a lot uh, thanks for your time sebastian and uh, for this great mm -hmm. presentation i hope everyone found it useful and if you have any questions please drop it in the chat uh, if you can stay around for a bit and uh, you know uh, answer the questions or else we can all, always connect offline 
so thank you yes. so much for uh, being here today so up up, up next uh, we have another session um, uh, by uh, anti vitenen who is the deal flow manager at finish business angels network one of the largest business angel networks in the world anti is uh, passionate about entrepreneurship and has worked on different projects to promote the entrepreneurship culture and building communities in today's session um he'll be talking taking us through the business angel la landscape in finland explaining how to connect with business angels in finland uh without further ado let me get him on screen uh if you can switch on your mic yes i found you thanks thanks for joining us today uh and over to you thank you thank you for inviting me and thanks also for sebo for your presentation you actually got me really excited i think uh very interesting what slas has done and, and i've been taking a uh, look at uh, the whole finnish uh, ecosystem for for more than 10 years now so uh definitely seen the effect uh, uh real life happening so slas has been really important for the whole finnish ecosystem and and maybe maybe something more on my presentation as well uh, so i've been uh, okay so actually host disabled participant for sharing screen so if you can give me that but yeah uh, i got a presentation as well but yeah if i really quickly go through so i've been as a deal flow manager at fiban for two and uh, uh two and a uh, half years now and basically my job is to connect the startups with the angel investors that we have let me first start with introducing uh, or letting you guys know a little bit about angel investors so uh, uh one one uh, funny thing also is that uh, nokia has been actually creating a really nice impact as well uh, if we think of uh, our angel investors we have a lot of c level and, and management level angel investors from previous nokia so you can think that that's one of the ways so angel investor is a person who has been uh, uh, working in the uh, yeah, so there might be somebody who's been working in a in a corporate world, uh, and maybe this way created knowledge and uh, uh, in specific area of business and created their networks there. And now now they are more focusing on 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 that they have created some wealth there and they are spending that uh, to support startups that are related to the field that they are experiencing. Or the the other side, which is the I think uh, increasing all the time. And what Sebastian was also talking about, that there is more and more entrepreneurs coming from Finland who has actually uh, gone through the road and and they have also uh, created like a, get an exit from their company. And now they are willing to spend that money to actually support other entrepreneurs to support the ecosystem. So that's how I see angel investors. They are something some, some people who are contributing for the ecosystem to grow. And, and and they are doing those investments that basically nobody else is doing. VCs are typically investing on the later stage and angels are jumping in the team and supporting the team to actually uh, get get the uh, running from the beginning. And, and then there's these two sides, more active and more passive side. So uh, we can also think of angel investors. There's those people who are really active. They might, might want to be on the board or in, as an advisor and they spend a lot of time with the founders. On the, or the, on the other side, there's those people who are more passive. And, and when you think about angel investment typically happening in syndicate, syndicate means a group of angel investors who invest. So, so there is many people who uh, invest in a company, but quite typically only few active angels, one or two uh, in this, this way. Angel investment typically happens in this so-called valley of debt. Uh, that means when the company is getting started and they are not really creating revenue, but more there is, uh, they have to invest in the company to do the R&D and so on. And, and this is the typical point when angel investors join in the company uh, and on the early stage when it's time to start growing the business. So ramping up and scaling the business. Then about angel invest investment, it's a high risk investment and, and it's good to, good to know this. Uh, this is like this graph that I have here is that typically angel, like what, how the angel investment or the investing in startup scene is typically seen. So half of the companies uh, fail and only 10%, one out of 10 succeed well. Uh, of course, uh, we have done some uh, 
research on this as well. And it looks like that uh, from FIBAN data that about 20% succeed quite well, at least for angel investors. So they bring in five times, uh, five times or more the money back and more than half payback. Uh, and this is the reason why investments are quite often made as a, in a syndicate to kind of reduce and, uh, and, and kind of share the risk. So not putting all the eggs in the same basket. Uh, then, uh, yes, FIBAN is one of the largest engine networks uh, in the galaxy and uh, one of the most active ones as, as well. So we have more than 650 members and uh, we have an office of seven people. And uh, basically, uh, one of the reasons for this is that uh, uh, FIBAN or the angel investment scene is also quite fresh in Finland. And, uh, and we, we, we basically had kind of two angel investor groups forming up pretty much the same time who decided to come together and, and form FIBAN. Uh, when we think, uh, think of uh, angel networks in, the, let's say, Stockholm in Sweden, uh, right next to us. So in, in the city of Stockholm, there already is four angel networks. And they, the reason for this is that uh, quite often angel networks are more uh, exclusive, so only some people from the uh, same workplace or same school, they, they, they kind of can go to that network where we in Finland and FIBAN, we think of this that it's more inclusive, everybody can join and we actually represent more than 20 nationalities throughout our members. So these are the kind of things that we do. So we do the deal flow, uh, which is my responsibility. Uh, we get something like uh, 500 applications that we go through every year. And then, um, uh, then we do education and uh, education for angel investors. Uh, that means that uh, we, we support angel investors to actually be more prepared and, and we, uh, we have uh, different types of uh, programs for them to learn how to lead uh, angel investment cases. And we have a lot of different type of investment materials for angel investors to make the investment uh, more simple and straightforward so that uh, they you would use like kind of these ready-made templates uh, or, or so that there would be the best practices, let's say like this. And then of course we do research and, and uh, we represent angel investors. And this is the uh, amount that was has been invested in this uh, between 2010 and 2021. So 387 million euros. And these are the top industries that in Finland, uh, mainly is invested business services, healthcare and medtech and clean tech and bioeconomy. Then last year was a, a really good year for investments. Uh, so about more than uh, 600 companies got an investment from FIBAN members. Of course, more companies got investment, but this is what from our data. And then uh, most transactions were made. So more than 1,000 uh, investment transactions were made. So a really good year last year, and Sebu already showed this, uh, but we could highlight the angel investors. So, so last year, angel investors invested, uh, actually, this is a new record, uh, 52.3 million, uh, 2019, it was 52 million. Uh, so, so a record year, and, and especially we can see here that uh, the, the foreign invest, investments uh, are coming to Finland more and more, which is really great. And then uh, one of the reasons why these numbers grow so fast, so uh, foreign investors, uh, foreign money, and also Finnish money is going for later rounds. So there is more bigger rounds. So, but this, this curve is like hockey stick. So <laughs> let's see what happens. I think it's amazing to see that Finland is growing this fast. Uh, then shortly about angel investor activities. So typically angel investors, when they join a company, uh, they spend for going through the, uh, the funding application that the entrepreneurs provide. They spend around one week for that. And then after that, they spend a couple of days a month with the company. So it's act really active. And here you can see uh, how the investments uh, look in Finland. So typical pre-money valuation is around 1 million euros when angel investors join and the median uh, median investment size is 200 250 so that's that's how it's been uh, past the five years actually 
Uh, and the median ticket size is also interesting. So that's 20,000 euros. So in median ticket size has been the same for five years as well. So 20,000 euros. The average is about 40 to 50. So there is a lot of those bigger rounds as well or bigger, bigger tickets. And then really shortly, if you are applying funding from FIBAN, so you just submit your application and it comes visible to all our members. Then after that, it will be screened by uh, six to eight FIBAN uh, investors and always you get feedback from your application. And the most promising startup companies or most suitable at that point will be invited to pitch in front of the angel investors. And then, of course, we support with the syndication and with the investment templates and so on. And all our services are free for chart for entrepreneurs. So uh, we, we run through the uh, membership fees. And then it's good to know. Uh, so this is the statistics. Uh, so 66% of all the applications that come to FIBAN, they go to the next stage, which means the screening. And the most common reasons why they are not going to this stage is that they, we accept companies who are located in, in the Nordics or in the Baltics. And, and if your company is somewhere else, you should have some kind of connections to Finland to kind of be reliable. And, and then the, the number two reason is uh, that we, we have like the valuation, uh, the maximum valuation that we accept is 5 million euros. Uh, and, and if the company is past that, then it's not that suitable for angel investors and we do not process them. But uh, anyways, 28% of all the, all the companies that apply to FIBAN gets to pitch and 12% of them receive interest. But that's, I guess, I'm right on time, am I? I guess that's 10 minutes, so. Yes, you, you are on time. Thank you so much, uh, Andy, for uh, the brief overview and covering the most important aspects when it comes to um, uh, business angel landscape in Finland. Uh, if any of you guys in the audience have any questions for him, you can uh, take a minute and ask or else uh, the chat is open. Please feel free to post it. I'm sure you're going to be around uh, for some time to answer to the questions. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, moving on to our next uh, segment. Uh, the next, uh, now that we have covered the fitness uh, um, business angel um, overview, let's uh, move on to uh, uh, the next one uh, where we will be covering and uh, where we'll be, you know, looking at the broader picture of Indian uh, uh, funding uh, landscape. And for the same, uh, we have. Amit Pandey, uh, who has been in the ecosystem for more than a decade now, and he has dabbled in operations, marketing events, and team building activities. Currently, he is uh, with Indian Venture and Alternate Cap Capital Association, IBCA, as the vice president. Um, who, uh, let me quickly have him on. Hi, hi, Amit. Uh, good to have you here. Thank so, you. Amit will be. Uh, covering, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking us through the Indian VC ecosystem and uh, what uh, what's in store for uh, the founders uh, here. So thank you, Amit, for joining us. Uh, over to you. Sure. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amit. Uh, thank you, Arzu, uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, I've been uh, in the ecosystem, uh, like Arzu said, uh, for quite some time. Uh, and I've been, uh, I, I've, I've tried to start off my own uh, which didn't turn out uh, successful, so a failure story there. And uh, after that, I joined uh, Inc. 42 uh, for a year. Uh, so funny story, Inc. 42, you might be aware, it's a media platform in India, uh, one of the best media platforms uh, in India currently uh, doing some good work. So I was with them for a year. Uh, we started together, the founder of Inc. 42 and me, uh, when I was doing my startup. And uh, after that, uh, spending a year there, I, I joined uh, the Indian Venture and Alternate Capital Association just to uh, sort of, you know, learn uh, uh, the deep insights and uh, movement around the Indian startup VC ecosystem from a broader perspective, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, that's about me. I'll quickly, so I, I just thought, you know, since it's a mixed audience, I thought maybe it'll be cool to uh, have uh, an overall ecosystem overview so that uh, in the interest of all of the audience uh, who are siding, uh, who are joining from both sides uh, uh, of the globe, 
So I thought maybe I'll, I'll first give a heads up on uh, the kind of uh, VC ecosystem uh, and the startup ecosystem and how uh, a startup can really, you know, step up in the Indian ecosystem. So currently we have, uh, so I, I'll start off with the VC and startups. So currently we have around close to 300 active uh, alternative investment funds that are SEBI registered, the Indian regulator uh, that uh, registers all the, all of the funds in the country. So these are, these are a bunch of uh, active domestic funds. Uh, which could be a mix of, uh, you know, VCs and PEs. Uh, and uh, then we have close to 200 uh, global uh, funds, uh, global uh, private equity venture capital funds, micro venture capitalists and angel networks. So that's uh, close to around 500 uh, that we should be having around that uh, number currently in India. These are all active funds uh, who invest across strategies, across stages and uh, so that's the number of uh, typically uh, the number of active funds in India. And uh, as per the statistics uh, received from the government of India, uh, because there's a registration uh, that every startup in India has to get done to avail some of the tax benefits, etc. So almost 50 plus startups are getting registered every day with the government of India, which is uh, in, in today's uh, day currently. So that's a really good number and a kind of progress uh, showing this progress uh, in the country. And uh, obviously, we all know about the unicorn story in the last two years, even though uh, there was some slump, but uh, last year uh, showed a lot of revival signs with a lot of uh, uh, IPOs and exits that happened. So we'll deep dive into that, but uh, it's, it's clearly uh, happening in the uh, country that the unicorns are now uh, seeing the light of the day and more and more companies are getting into the billion dollar club. And uh, all of this is due to multiple reasons, which I'll quickly deep dive, uh, deep dive in, the, uh, in the rest of the presentation quickly. Uh, so just some more, you know, heads up, uh, for example, you know, IBCA, very few people know about the Indian Venture Not Trade Capital Association. But if you go to our website for any entrepreneur, aspiring entrepreneur or existing entrepreneur, you can find so many uh, tons of free uh, information available on our website. Uh, you know, tons of reports around VCP, startup, uh, micro VC, uh, sector specific reports there's so much of data available for free on our website and similarly there are tons of engagements done by tai uh, they have several chapters across uh, the country head start obviously thank you for hosting uh, giving this opportunity uh, there's nascom there's iceberg so you just uh, you know folks just can go back and refer to these uh, and uh, you know, have some of the, with respect to the government, obviously Startup India is, uh, I saw their logo in the session. Startup India is really active, uh, amazing team, uh, you know, front facing of the government, which uh, probably we couldn't have even imagined 10 years ago. Thanks to Prime Minister Modi for launching the Startup India Action Plan. And uh, that's how the Startup India uh, came into play and it's doing an active role. It's playing an active, very active role in the Indian uh, ecosystem, uh, just like several other uh, investment promotion agencies uh, from across the globe. And uh, so I'll just, uh, you know, go to the next, uh, just to give a very quick overview of how the ecosystem has evolved in the country uh, so that folks get an idea, you know, I mean, so, I mean, obviously, you know, 30 years back, uh, uh, there was hardly any action. And uh, currently, there are a bunch of, uh, you know, PEVC funds that are very active. We, if we go see some of the numbers, this is uh, a, a report by EY, which was uh, which covered the whole decade, uh, you know, from 1995 to 2022 decades. And uh, as we can clearly see the numbers, there were hardly any PVC funds in the mid of 90s to where I shared, you know, I mean, in 2022, uh, March, uh, say, you know, we have around 500 uh, funds and it has dramatically grown in a, during COVID, interestingly, uh, that's another story to tell. But uh, it has been really wonderful and amazing uh, how, how uh, you know, given the number of, uh, given the population, given the number of uh, digital adoption, mobile penetration, uh, you know, in the country like India, how rapidly uh, the startup and venture capital movement uh, has taken on and, and with the support of the government, obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's moving really fast. And uh, this is, these are some numbers. And again, we can clearly see, uh, obviously, you know, 2020 was a slump, but in 2021, uh, it was a big bounce back and, uh, you know, there were a few IPOs, prominent IPOs, which everyone's aware about. And uh, uh, also, you know, quickly taking a pause, uh, you know, since we have only 10 minutes uh, for this, so I'm just rushing through it. Uh, in case anyone has any questions, uh, I'm not sure we can answer in 10 minutes, but please uh, feel free to reach out to me offline. 
uh, on LinkedIn or anywhere, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it'll be, I, I'll be happy to take any questions or engagements forward. Uh, uh, so coming back to this, as we can see, you know, because of the IPOs and uh, because of the lot of uh, secondary sales, uh, strategic sales that happened uh, in 2021, there have been a considerable, considerable amount of funding. Uh, there's been uh, a lot of new funds have been added in the last two years. Uh, a lot of new funds uh, that have been registered with the SEBI. Uh, and obviously, you know, the ones that had uh, raised funds throughout the last uh, five, seven years have gotten uh, the growth stage rounds. And uh, that's how it's, it's amounting to this wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, number uh, that we see in 2021. And uh, going forward, uh, just, just to broadly uh, share a breakdown in terms of the sectors uh, for the VC ecosystem specifically, uh, obviously, you know, e-commerce, uh, uh, the country country's adoption in terms of e-commerce has been really wonderful but uh, going forward you know wonderful uh, amount of d2c companies that we are seeing a lot of emerging trends fintech you know india surpassed uh, uh, you know ecosystems like china in uh, in in a, place, in a place like fintech a space like fintech and uh, obviously you know health tech gaming ed tech has always uh, been around the last four five years we all know these amato story uh, you know, it's, it's a really wonderful case study of how uh, how Dipender uh, Goel, the founder of uh, Zomato, started uh, literally from a scratch, a very basic idea. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously the journey of entrepreneurship, you know, where, where uh, they've taken the brand today uh, across the globe listing in India and, uh, you know, rest is history. So, so wonderful stories there coming out of the country that are not just inspiring for the Indian entrepreneurs, but obviously, you know, for uh, uh, entrepreneurs across the globe. Uh, you know, probably if you would have asked, uh, you know, even five years ago, uh, you know, folks will order food online and, uh, you know, what will be the adoption number, uh, what will be the uh, daily active users. I mean, you know, lo look at the Zomato numbers and, and it's, it's uh, more than inspirational. So uh, coming back to the next section, uh, there were wonderful exits across, uh, you know, several sectors. And uh, I think this is what the uh, Indian VC ecosystem was poised for and, uh, you know, post COVID, this is really welcoming and heartwarming to see the number of uh, exits, IPOs that have happened uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, we can see some of the details then and, and uh, since, since most of the data, again, you know, that uh, I've put across is uh, from the reports, uh, you know, some of the reports that we've done in the past. So I'll be happy to uh, share the report with anyone. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Arzu uh, from Head Start and we'll be happy to share the presentation. Uh, with anyone and yeah so uh, going back uh, to the numbers and and you know what's been wonderful uh, in the last couple of years is uh, there's, there's been so much movement around the ESOPs uh, you know there have been some changes also that have happened in the ESOP regulations uh, thanks to the lobbying of uh, you know uh, you know the venture capital ecosystem supported by industry bodies like IBCA and uh, you know the the regulation change uh, in the ESOP uh, has has really helped the founders, and uh, which has created a wonderful uh, movement across their teams. You know, so like I say, you know, uh, I mean, we all talk about the Amazon mafia, but we really know, uh, you know, how much of uh, the second gen entrepreneurs are coming out of these existing. Uh, uh, companies uh, in India, and uh, you know, a bunch of uh, folks who started maybe at Amazon, uh, you know, at, sorry, I'm sorry, at, at Flipkart are currently, you know, doing really wonderful, uh, having started their own companies. Uh, so I, so there's this wonderful example, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Taxi for Sure, which is a company that later on got uh, acquired. Uh, so basically, you know, it was funded by Bloom Ventures, uh, a VC fund. And uh, later on, the founder of Taxi for Sure invested back uh, in Bloom as an LP. So, you know, those stories, and this is like, you know, a few years ago. So, I mean, there are a tremendous amount of uh, recycling that has started happening in the Indian ecosystem where a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs that have made successful exits are coming back and, you know, investing in the angel ecosystem uh, who are investing as angel investors, uh, you know, along with uh, some syndicates. I mean, all of this money wealth that has been created is again coming back to the ecosystem and it is so uh, heartwarming and it is such exemplary to see all of this happening. And uh, I, I think, you know, that that uh, certainly shows that uh, the ecosystem is going to be moving really positively, uh, you know, in times to come. And, uh, you know, obviously, 
uh, there's enough dry powder, there's been enough dry powder in the last three to four years uh, in the VCP ecosystem, specifically in the VC ecosystem. And uh, one of the biggest reasons around that is, uh, which is uh, not much talked about, is a bunch of uh, Indian VC funds are very actively also raising funds from the uh, from within the Indian family offices, within the Indian corporate, within the Indian LP ecosystem. There is enough capital availability and gradually as the India story is playing out loud, there are more and more family offices and domestic capital of uh, pools opening up for these, uh, you know, proven uh, VCP funds that have probably, you know, uh, gone through the first or second uh, fundraise and probably this is their third raise or second raise maybe you know and they've already seen some exits uh, maybe some hundred x's you know that have happened uh, and and there are tons of examples uh, in the indian ecosystem in the interest of time uh, i think you know i'll uh, i don't know if it's been 10 minutes or not but uh, i think I'm, I'm done so uh, i'll be happy to take a question or two hours if time permits or if there are any questions thanks amit uh... Uh, thanks for the detailed presentation and it's always good to see uh, these numbers highlighted uh, and uh, to see the movement happening in the ecosystem uh, and thanks a lot for your contribution in the same. Uh, th thanks for have, I mean, being with us today sharing this uh, detailed report uh, on the Indian uh, venture capital and uh, guys if you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the chat section as as uh, Amit mentioned, he'll, he'll be happy to take it offline as well. So you can connect with him on LinkedIn. Um, and yes, that's about it. Thanks a lot, Amit. Moving on to our uh, next um, uh, session. Uh, we have uh, Nia Har Harjane, uh, entrepreneur, who's an entrepreneur at heart and now been helping founders create amazing things at Kiosk, uh, which is the leading startup accelerator in Finland. Let me quickly add her here. So uh, welcome, uh, Nia. Would love to learn about how uh, to become a part of Kios and uh, what are the opportunities available for startups globally. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I just as the others will then just take a second to share my screen so that I can share a bit of material with you. All right, here we go. Um, Again, thanks for, for having me. My name is Nea. Uh, I am the CEO of the number one startup accelerator in Finland called Kiwas. Just to give you a bit of context, uh, Kiwas is a nonprofit organization that is being run by five full-time core team members from the legendary startup sauna here in Finland, Espo. And what does being a startup accelerator mean to us? Uh, is, it, is, it is much more than just running 10 week programs. To us, we see this as a mission of trying to drill deep, uh, very deep into the pain points of the founders, and then just spending most of our days into figuring out what are the most concrete ways that we can then help the founders resolve these pain points, which then brings us to the, the service um, the service selection of Kiwas. So starting from the, the earliest pain points uh, over the years, we noticed that even though we have quite a lot of people that are interested in the startup ecosystem, actually have already started, uh, started their own startups, we saw a big gap between the enthusiasm and then the factual knowledge of what does it actually take to build a company? What are the bits and pieces you need to understand in order to, to create a success story out of your company? So then to solve this very concrete pain point, we have then created a free online course called Starting Up, for anyone interested in becoming an entrepreneur or a great course for anyone who already is a startup founder to really make sure that they understand the basic fundamentals of what does it take to create a success story. So together with all the university and Amaki VSA, we created this free online entrepreneurship course uh, for anyone interested in this topic. Then to continue on the path of the, the pain points uh, that founders might have is that we have created a free um, open to everyone internationally uh, online platform for anyone to find a co-founder for their startup. So how the platform works is either if you have already a startup, uh, you might already have some of the team members there, but you are then missing a core member of the team. Let's say you have a great business idea, but you are lacking technical talent, or then you have technical talent, but would need someone to then um, make it into a better business case was inside is then the best best place in the world for that so then you can post your own project uh 
or any prospective new co-founders to see your project and start the discussion, or either if you are an individual where you currently don't have your own idea or aren't working on your own startup, so look for interesting projects where you can join. We have a large variety of different fields and domain experts that are there looking for the most interesting projects, so this would then be a very easy or um, low barrier way to enter the GIWAS community as well as then so solve one of the most painful pain points of the early stage journey, which is finding the right team. Then on to what we are most known for, um, GIWAS Accelerator is our flagship program, um, highly rewarded one uh, that we run twice a year. It's a 10 week long, very intensive program where we take 15 to 20 startups at a time for 10 weeks. And during those weeks, um, we match them with top of the line serial entrepreneurs, investors, domain experts, basically whoever are the people that an individual team might need, we then the Kiwas team do our very best during those 10 weeks to find all the right people within the European ecosystem that we can find and then match them to. So it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring from, from one of the, some of the greatest entrepreneurs and investors in Europe. Uh, aside from that, obviously, a lot of workshops and very concrete help in whatever are the, the bottlenecks to, to the growth of your company, whether it be as mundane as getting your paperwork in order or a recruitment or any of the building blocks that you might need to, to accelerate the, the journey of your startup is exactly what we're drilling down on, on during those 10 weeks. What we are especially focused on is that the program is fully tailored to the needs of each individual startup, meaning that we're then able to take startups all the way from idea stage to companies that already have hundreds of thousands of euros uh, in revenue, which is actually a, exactly the case that we right now have in our spring cohort. This just means that every week we sit down with all the teams, get all their pain points in, onto, onto a list, and simply tailor all the content to focus on those pain points. So it's no general lectures or um, speeches. Uh, it's completely focusing on whatever is blocking your startup from moving forward. We will then do our best to, to solve that. Um, yeah, we are industry agnostic, meaning that as well as the stage, there's a large variety between the companies that we accept. The industries are also, they vary a lot. Currently in our batch, we have everything from ed tech hardware, we have sustainable furniture, all the way to more traditional AI platforms, um, B2B solutions, uh, a lot of software startups. So it's a really large range. For us, what matters is that one, is the team working on the solution full time? Two, does the team have the needed um, domain expertise or competence to be solving the problem that they're solving and then three going into the problem as we put 110 percent into into helping the teams we want to make sure that they are really solving a real problem that has significant impact on making the world a better place so that's our preferred genre um, even if we are not too specific about the industry um, the program is remote, meaning that anyone from all over the world can apply. Um, within our last cohort, I think we already have about 50% of the applications coming in from outside of Finland. So if you have any, any relevant ecosystem startups or people interested, you can then just rec recommend them to apply to Kiwas. Uh, the remote structure makes it very easy for anyone to participate. We are going to have our next cohort uh, in the fall. We're going to open the applications during the summer. And as you can see, um, we are, I don't know if it's that we are lucky, but at least we are very happy to say that almost all the founders uh, have, have really seen this as a, if not a life-changing journey, then at least their startup changing journey. Um, we have a hundred percent recommendation rate for the program and the founders have pretty much always felt that they've left better off after exiting the program. And then one last element of what I might mention is that 
we already have about 440 founders that have gone through the programs, meaning that now we have this large pool of alumni, a huge pool of knowledge that throughout the years um, have gone through the program, are now progressing with their own startups to really have the previous generation of entrepreneurs helping the new generation of entrepreneurs. It's a really unique founder to founder mentality that we're able to then host at, at, at the QS community. And just, you know, towards the end, a bit on the impact of, of Kiwas. Uh, we've been around since 2017. So in five years, um, we are now getting close to 200 million uh, raised by the alumni of Kiwas Accelerator. There's getting close to 2,000 people on the Kiwas Inside co-founder matching platform, and over 10,000 people have completed the starting up course. So for a very small five person core team we've been able to achieve quite a lot during the past years if you know if you know any startups that might benefit from the qs program that are are looking to relocate to finland please um, share the, the information with them we are super happy to take a look at their application and hopefully help them in any way that we can we are opening applications in the in the summer for the next batch thank you so much for having me and if you have any questions i'm super happy to take them Thanks, Nia, for this uh, presentation. We have had, you know, um, uh, someone from Pure's before also, and it's always a pleasure to uh, learn about the uh, impact that you've been uh, creating in the ecosystem. In fact, uh, I'm aware of a few Indian startups who, you know, got into the Pure's accelerator and uh, were one among the top three startups there. So uh, yes, definitely recommend uh, uh, to apply if any of uh, the founders here today uh, um, are considering, please feel free to uh, reach out uh, to Nea and uh, me as well. I can connect you with uh, relevant folks from yours. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for the great presentation and thanks for uh, being with us today. All right, moving on to the last uh, segment of uh, today's uh, uh, webinar and uh, glad to be on time, uh, maybe four minutes uh, exceeded, but yes, uh, I hope you guys are finding it uh, relevant. And up next, we will have uh, Hannah Risky, uh, who is a senior advisor at Business Finland, and uh, she'll be talking about uh, Business Finland as a funding organization and a channel to enter Finland as a startup entrepreneur. Uh, welcome, Hannah, and uh, glad to have you back. Thank you very much, Azu. Nice to be here, and thank you also for the previous presenters for really good, really good presentations. Uh, just a minute, I will share my screen. Are you able to see the slides now? Yes. You just mean uh, not the present? I mean the slideshow. Yes. So just briefly, if you weren't here in the beginning, my name is Hanna Riski and I work here at Business Finland office here in Helsinki and uh, in the Work in Finland unit uh, attracting foreign startups to Finland. And I'm here to provide you a short introduction on the Business Finland funding opportunities that we provide for startups. And so also I will brief you, briefly introduce you the startup permit, which is one of the services that we provide provide for startups here at Business Finland. First of all, briefly about Business Finland. What is it about? It's a government owned organization. And I, uh, we say that our mission is to catalyze new sustainable growth through innovation and international collaboration. And basically what it means is uh, that we here at Business Finland, we promote, facilitate, and also fund innovations. Uh, we help Finnish companies grow and go international uh, with the help of our global network, which I will present next. And we are also working to make Finland an attractive destination for international travel investments and also for talents. And on the next slide here, you're able to see our global network. So we are truly a global organization. Uh, we have uh, 16 offices here in Finland. 40 offices all around the world, as you can see from the map. And I think we have also our uh, colleagues from our Indian office here today at this webinar. So, so truly a global and an international uh, organization providing free of charge um, services for company. And at the moment, I think we have a little over 700 employees here at Business Finland. 
So basically, as we are a government-owned uh, organization and we are all working with taxpayers' money, uh, we are looking for success stories and we want to make sure that, the, for example, the funding that we provide to our clients is going to good use. And, and we truly want to find, find clients that have competitive advantage in international markets. They have impact on Finland. We want that our client companies have a versatile competence and a team. The technology or the product is not enough. We want that the team is also really good. Uh, we want our clients to have sufficient resources to go international. So basically companies that are only focusing on the domestic markets, uh, they are not our clients. We want clients that are willing to go international and look for international growth. And we also want that the uh, owners and the board are committed to international growth. So internationalization is really, really important to and it's an important criteria when we, for example, uh, fund, fund our clients. So what are the services that we provide uh, for startups? Uh, from this slide, you can see just like the general, more general scene on the public incentives and funding sources uh, that the uh, governmental organizations here in Finland provide. Uh, later on, I will explain the business Finland R&D and innovation incentives more in detail. Then, for example, we have 15 EDU centers here in Finland. Uh, providing business aids, uh, training and employment incentives for companies. We have the state bank, which is called Finvera, providing loans and guarantees for companies. We have the Academy of Finland providing development research funding. Uh, we have the uh, Finnish industry investment, TESI, as we call it here in Finland, providing capital investments. It's a 100% state-owned state -owned equity investor. And of course, we have the European Union and the funding possibilities that the European Union is providing to Finnish companies. And actually, we here at Business Finland have also advisory services that can help you find the suitable uh, EU funding program for your company. And we also have complementary advisory services for companies uh, expanding to Finland or from Finland to abroad. So here, uh, here's a slide uh, uh, explaining more in detail the funding uh, services that in, uh, Business Finland provides for young growth companies. And when I say young growth companies, uh, we basically mean uh, startups that are under five years old. I'm briefly going to explain to you Tempo R&D funding and the Young Innovative Company funding. However, we also have other possibilities, such as the Innovation Voucher, Market Explorer, which means that you are able to do market research, Talent Explorer, which basically means that you have the possibility to employ an, uh, talent, international talent to your company. I can later on add uh, some links to Business Finland website to the chat where you're able to find more information about these funding possibilities. And as, as explained earlier, uh, we are uh, we are a public organization I'm dealing with the Finnish taxpayers' money. So it is important to us that uh, when you apply for Business Finland funding, uh, you have a company which is established here in Finland. That is important to us. Otherwise, of course, the background of the applicants does, uh, there's no difference. What is the background of the applicants? We, we uh, evaluate the applications to uh, using the same criteria, but the company has to be established here in Finland. So first of all, we have Tempo funding, which basically means that you have the possibility to learn about new markets, investigate about possible demand in the target market, test your products and so on. This is a grant of 75%, uh, covering 75% of the project's costs. And the maximum amount of the grant from Business Finland side is 50,000 euros. Then we have the R&D funding for research and development. This basically gives you the possibility to develop a service, a product, a process, or a business model further. We have a grant, which can be maximum of 50%. It's for critical research. And then we have the loan 50 to 70% uh, 
which is usually related to the development, development of your uh, products. Then we have the Young Innovative Company funding. Uh, this is not uh, suitable for all our clients. We are truly, in this funding, we are funding uh, clients who are truly able to grow uh, and scale globally and develop your business comprehensively and really grow rapidly in a global scale. Uh, this is kind of a combination funding, uh, which includes grant and loan. Uh, the grant can be maximum half a million euros and the loan can be maximum 750,000 euros. And the, and the funding present is 75 percent and usually the funding is, is granted in three to four phases. For example, you get two phases, first the grant and in the third phase you get the loan. But I will add, uh, I will add uh, the link to the Business Finland website where you are able to find more detailed information about this funding possibilities to the chat. Here's just a slide showing that uh, Business Finland funding uh, helps startups to attract VC funding as well. As you can see from the slide, uh, investors have believed usually to the same companies that Business Finland have granted uh, funding to. It's actually missing year 2021, but you can see from 2020, for example, that the uh, uh, line here is showing that the average size of investment is growing and so is the number of startups receiving Business Finland fund. So just shortly, what are we looking for? This also applies for the startup permit, which I'm going to explain to you next. So we are looking for ambitious startup teams who really are looking for international growth. We want the high IPRs and the team in Finland. We want that there is a true competitive advantage, a great team, sufficient resources and a true passion for growth. And then shortly about the startup permit, which is one of the services that we provide for startups. It's actually a residence permit for innovative entrepreneurs coming from outside the European economic area to establish a startup here in Finland. It basically means that it's an online application. It's evaluated by Business Finland and also by the Finnish Immigration Service. It's, it's, apply, uh, it's granted for maximum two years, but it has the possibility to be extended. And your spouse and children can apply as family members. And in this, in this slide, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but here are the steps, how the application process basically works. And one note, uh, the eligibility statement is always granted to a team of minimum of two founders, not to individual persons, to individual entrepreneurs. So that's good to keep in mind. But basically, you apply uh, for the eligibility statement from Business Finland. You have stirred a certain attachments needed. This is free of charge. After that, you can apply for the residence permit from the Finnish Immigration Service, which basically means that you need to have a positive, positive statement from Business Finland, uh, different documents which are stated here. And here is a price tag of 350 euros. And once you get a positive, uh, positive uh, statement from here as well. You have the possibility to establish a company in Finland and take use of the versatile uh, startup ecosystem services that we have. And for example, apply for Business Finland's Tembo funding. And just uh, shortly, some statistics, statistics on the startup permits from years uh, 2018 to 2020. Uh, we had 440 applications, 150 received positive statements, and uh, we had over 50 established companies here in Finland. Thank you very much. Here you are able to see uh, my contact details. You can also contact me uh, via LinkedIn. If you have some questions, please uh, share them in the chat. And uh, Sandra already mentioned that we have a feedback survey which Sandra sent to the chat, it would be great to get some feedback from you guys. And here is just the last picture, uh, actually from Slush a couple of years back. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot, Hannah. Uh, startup permit is something, uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of founders from India reach out uh, to us for. 
and I hope this uh, uh, this presentation was helpful for them to gather some information about uh, the opportunities available in Business Finland uh, and uh, of course uh, Finland itself. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today and uh, with this we come to an end to today's uh, webinar. Uh, if there are any questions uh, you can feel free to drop them in the chat box. Uh, or uh, uh, feel free to connect with us uh, offline. You can email me arzu.jain at hetsa.in or, um, or uh, uh, you know, uh, the speakers, the guests of today's session are also available on LinkedIn to answer to any of your questions. Uh, we'll see you again uh, next month with another initiative um, and all the details will be sent to you via email. Thanks a lot everyone for joining us. Thank you Arzu. Thank you everyone.